Good afternoon, thank you. Um, okay, we're gonna start early. So uh, we're gonna be talking about bridge to housing and uh, it would be unfair uh, to start it by having it be about me because it really wasn't. And to follow on the theme about being ready for innovation and uh, um, building on common themes, um, it really takes pretty much a region to move a village. So um, I can really only thank all of our partners and to say that I am actually also humble to be able to present on their behalf, many of whom are much more eloquent than I. So uh, the issues surrounding homelessness are tough, right? Standard ways haven't always proven to be a good solution for many. And um, encampments are an special issue. And th that's not just in Yolo, that's a national issue. Um, when the riverfront property in West Sacramento was sold to new owners, they presented the city and its police department with the daunting task of trying to address the existing encampment. Uh, the police chief turned to the partners and challenged us, what else could we try besides traditional policing? Um, if we can go back to the other slide. So if you'd gone out to the river before bridge to housing, this is what you would have seen. Um, a makeshift tent community, trash, no drinking water, no sanitation. And if you were lucky, you would have met Steve. He's right up there in the top middle. And uh, he could have shown you around. And he had been homeless for 17 years, and the last eight of them he had spent on the riverbank. Now he would tell you, back in the day, that he was never, ever, going to leave the riverbank again, no matter what. So what was our solution to this issue? Well, it was housing first. And housing first is a different approach. And it's a different approach to solving homelessness through <gasps> traditional permanent housing. And you has joined many other jurisdictions, including the state of Utah and Houston and San Francisco, um, urban, rural, liberal, and conservative, in trying something new. Um, but in this, we decided to create a time and population limited pilot uh, so that we could test housing first, but we could also use the lessons learned in creating new ways to address homelessness in our region. But I have to tell you that to move an entire encampment of long-term homeless is a lot more than standard housing first. It would take something bold, it would take something innovative, and it would take a huge leap of faith by all of the partners and their respective political bodies. But of course, YOLO. So what made it bold and innovative? Well, there were many innovations, and lots of them we're not going to go into today, including the North Levy cleanup and moving day. Today we're just going to highlight three of them. And the first one was being able to use housing vouchers to provide housing for encampment residents. And to do that, we were able to look at the entire universe of rules in a very complex program and create a brand new path which had never existed before that would allow us to work with encampment residents. The second thing we did was to um, address an entire encampment. This is the first time um, that we know of where an entire encampment has been moved. And when we did that, we didn't cherry pick the easy to house. We didn't cherry pick those with services. Instead, we, rolled, we enrolled everyone who signed up. And unlike most programs, as you can see, we took their dogs and their cats. Lots of dogs and cats. And the third part is we created boot camp for housing. Now, the average length of homelessness on the river was over four years, and some had been on the river for over 20. So they are the most difficult to serve. They don't have income. They don't have identification. They have suffered major trauma in their lives. Many have substance abuse issues. And boot camp, which you can see right here, gave them an opportunity to work on social reintegration and harm reduction. And they got to relearn what you and I take for granted every day. Stay inside. Change your sheets and towels. Use a cell phone. Work with a property manager, not just a social worker. And so what did we get for outcomes? And so if you can see, this is our bridge to housing. 71 surveyed, 65 entered the program, 53 graduated. Of that, 23% had no health or substance abuse issue and everybody else did. 49% of them were co-occurring. 75% of them were between the ages of 25 and 54. 
and there was a pretty good gender split between male and female, and oh yeah, all those pets. So what do we get at the very end? You can see in the second chart, CalFresh pre-enrollment was 47%, 81% post, health insurance was 47% pre to 89% post, and a income, a whopping 11% of those folks had income, and 40% at this point have it now. But most telling, 0% had any kind of housing opportunity or voucher as opposed to 92% post-program. And as of the time of uh, this, 47% of them are now permanently housed. And I understand as of today that two more have found housing. And that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs> the, these outcomes are uncommon if you don't track um, this kind of challenge. I think that this project is, is and will attract national attention, and it's something that, that is um, possibly a breakthrough.